Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is all crippling depression. That's right, 16 feet of the robot just taken apart for inspection and trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, in this video and the subsequent videos after this, I'm going to be showing you what I'm doing to revamp crippling depression for an event that I've got coming up in, I think, mid-May. It's the AVC event um, here locally in Colorado. A lot of people are going to be go. 30 pound event should be pretty cool. So I'm going to break these videos down into four main components. There's about four things I need to address on the bot, like from a project management standpoint. Um, we've got the weapon system, we've got the drive system, we've got the electronics, and then the frame and just kind of all the other assembly pieces. So that's kind of how I'm at least breaking it down in my spreadsheet. So this video, we're going to address the actual drive system and the weapon block, or sorry, the weapon system and the weapon block. So let's uh, take a closer look at this and see what I'm going to tweak and fix. So just a quick note before we get started, I'm going to try and make these videos a little bit uh, more informal and off the cuff. So please do look down and use the chapter listings to kind of jump around and see the parts that are relevant for you. These might be a little rambly at times because I don't really know where this video is going. I'm just kind of sharing the things I'm thinking about when I think about them. So this, this is the weapon block for crippling depression. I call it the weapon block um, because it is a block of aluminum that drives the weapon. This is the original weapon block that I made, I don't know, like probably four years ago at this point. I'm not really even sure, but it's got about one competition left in it. Um, you can see that there's a big dent up here. Um, someone actually got through the front plates. There's a lot of damage up front. And it's, you know, it's just a bit tired. And I'll, I'll kind of explain some of the um, tired portions of it here in a minute. But for anyone new to Crippling Depression, it is a 30-pound featherweight combat robot. Um, it is an undercutter. So this kind of sits um, here. Let me see if I can grab some frame pieces. We got some frame pieces that kind of go here and uh, over there. So this kind of is the main central structure of the robot. Then the drive sits on the side and then all the other guts all sit back there. So this is kind of pretty critical to the um, frame or the structure of the robot. And since it's an undercutter, um, we have the weapon that is slung underneath. So that attaches to this hub piece like that. And then it makes spin spin and then this obviously spins and hits people so that is kind of the overview um, as for power this is um, one of the few robots out there that actually uses two motors um, two brushless motors for the weapon um, we've got one there and another one that sits over there i think more people are starting to kind of do this design um, when i came out with this i saw a few people try it afterwards um, most famously, I guess, um, Ribot has a very similar configuration to this um, on BattleBots for their undercutter configuration, and it's worked out quite well for me. So um, that's kind of the overview of the weapon block. Let's now talk about what failed and what I need to change. So let's see where to start. Um, I think the actual power transmission is a good place to start. So you have this pulley and you have a motor that mounts from underneath and then on the shaft you have these little um, timing pulleys. One sits there, one sits there, and then there's a belt. Where's a belt? There's a belt. So the belt sits in there like that. I'm not going to put it in because it's kind of a pain. But that is generally how everything works. Now, if you look at these pulleys, you can see that they're really nasty. And this one has a lot of wear. I think the weapon bound up at some point still works OK. The big issue that I was having is these pulleys are transmitting power from the shaft of the motor with a set screw and you can see it just barely even fits on there because, I don't know if you can see this up close, the set screw will kind of just dig in and gall out the motor. It doesn't really sit in there nicely and as that weapon hits against stuff, it's gonna wanna stop and slow down because that's what the whole thing is. So the set screw is just 
I hate set screws. They're last resort, they're a bad design, and they're just not good for this. So what I'm gonna do is actually completely remake the shafts on these. I think these shafts are a little bit too soft. Completely remake the shaft and um, actually do a keyway in here, which is the same thing that I did on the drive. So pulleys with a keyway. Now, the downside to that is it's not gonna be captive in any way. These pulleys could just pop right out. Not a big deal. There is a plate that covers this whole thing, so they shouldn't really go anywhere. Shouldn't go anywhere. But yeah, that's the biggest change is making sure that the pulley and the shaft are properly coupled and I don't just get all this digging inside of there. The next issue that I ran into, and when I'm talking about any of this stuff, keep in mind that I only fix what's a problem. That's always kind of my, um, my code is I'm not going to touch anything that doesn't need to be fixed. So these are only things that need to be fixed. The motors um, attach with these four holes. Boom, boom, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Sits underneath like that. The biggest issue I have is this weapon block sees an insane amount of force. This stupid little thing is spinning at like 8,000 RPM and I constantly hit stuff. Crippling depression is a very brutal bot. It is meant to just outlast the opponent. So it's gonna be hitting a lot and taking a lot of stress and my weapon rarely stops. So the problem is, is that these motors and this connection point sees a lot of stress and you probably can't tell on camera, but there's no threads in any of these. It just pulls out all of the threads and that has always been an issue for me. So I'm gonna drill these out, make these a lot bigger and use a much larger screw in here. Hopefully I'll get a little bit more bite. So that's one thing I'm doing. The other thing I'm doing is this is a flat smooth face and a flat smooth face. You can see kind of the indent pattern of the motor on both of these. I'm going to machine in probably 50 thou. So this is a pocket that this sits on so that the motor doesn't twist. It kind of rattles and twists in there a little bit when it starts getting loose. I wanna prevent that from happening. So a 50 thou pocket down in there will allow it to seat tightly. It shouldn't rotate or wobble. And then the larger fasteners will hopefully keep this in place. And then I won't have issues with the pulleys galling. So that should hopefully fix that whole um, issue that I've always had. Another issue that I need to address, I'm, I need to make all new frame rails. You can see that these are not that there's large gaps. These things are not even remotely flat anymore, and that's fine. These usually get replaced after every competition. There are two dowel pins, one that sits there and one that sits there, and I don't know if you can see that on camera. This one, that's supposed to be a circle. It is no longer a circle. The mounting between these two, there's a lot of stresses involved here because this is basically the internal frame structure of the bot. These get a little bit loose over time. So what I'm gonna have to do is open up the hole. Let me see if I can adjust the focus, something like that. So on the end, you have the two pockets for the dowel pins and these open up over time. It just kind of stretches because the dowel pins are a lot harder than the aluminum. So I might actually try going to like an aluminum dowel that I press in there with like a hydraulic press because once these two things, once these two things are together, I don't really ever need to take them apart unless at the very, very end of the competition. So these two pieces can be kind of permanently mounted together. So if I can have a pin that I can press in really tightly, and if it's the same material, hopefully I won't just keep opening up these holes. And there's two screws, one right there and there that holds the whole thing together. But what I'm thinking of is just pressing in, come on, oh, you stupid thing. Um, pressing in something aluminum and maybe like peening it or something like that on the outside. We'll see how that goes, but I need kind of a better connection method because these end up just kind of slipping and loosening up over time. As for the weapon block itself, some of you might have seen this issue. Um, I use these tapered roller bearings, um, one in the top and, well, okay, top and one in the bottom, and that allows this pulley to spin. But if you watch it, that is no longer concentric. 
So these these pulleys are the ultimate thing that is attaching to the weapon, and you know they're kind of holding all that power in place. And you can see that there's a sleeve on the bottom and another sleeve up here on the top. And there's a titanium hat that sits on top of this that holds the whole assembly tight. And these sleeves are there because when it was just bare aluminum, these would just crush in from the forces of the um, bolt that was holding the whole thing together. Any side load would just immediately crush that aluminum in. And I'm still seeing that issue here so what I want to do is just remake these. I actually have a couple more and I'm just going to do sleeves again. I can't really think of a better way to do this. This usually lasts an entire competition, but for future future, if I'm completely redesigning crippling depression, I need to come up with something better because this soft aluminum pulley is definitely getting really deformed. <laughs> So the last thing I want to talk about with crippling depression for the weapon side of things are the weapon discs. I currently have three discs. I also have the bar, but I'm not going to mess with the bar for right now. Um, so I've got this one, which is nasty. Um, this one has the largest tooth. It's actually one of the lower um, kinetic energy ones because it has less weight on the outside because of this large cutout here. This one's the heaviest. It's also the thickest. I don't know why that's not really going to show up on camera. But it's the thickest and it's also a little bit unbalanced. So this one wobbles just a tiny bit. Um, then we have the original one with its um, tooth. And these are all S7 and you can see that the teeth have kind of worn down a little bit. So this one just doesn't have that much bite anymore, unfortunately. Probably still usable. You can see it has a little bit of a tooth on the back side. These have been surfaced down, so they're actually a little bit thinner, so they don't rub on the floor. And then I have the medium tooth one as well. And I guess, you know, looking at these, they do have some teeth still left, but you can see it's pretty chipped off. So I think what I'm gonna do for this competition is I'm actually going to have some um, AR500 cut from, you know, send, cut, send, or whoever. I'm just gonna do a one, maybe two new weapons. The S7 is relatively expensive. You have to source the S7 material, um, send it to a water jet cutter, have them cut it, then I have to do the machining on that, then I have to take that and then get it hardened. AR500, I basically just click a button online, it shows up, and then I will still have to um, bore these out, but that's not too bad. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. but. Anyway, I'm going to be doing new weapons. I'll most likely bring, maybe even all of these, but I'll most likely at least bring this guy. Um, but I'm going to try a different and new design for the undercutter, and we'll get into that much later. So there you have it. I'm trying to do these videos a little bit more educational, just to kind of show you the work involved. Um, after Balabots airs, it's kind of always interesting to see the comments on Reddit and Facebook and be like, oh, that's an undercutter, that's a vertical spinner, and they're all the same, and it's, there's so many details. I mean, you just saw the little tweaks that I'm doing, and every part's gonna remain almost the same, but it's just these tiny, tiny little details that make a bot work well or not work well. So I think that's the interesting part, and that's why a lot of builders actually watch my channel, because they actually get this information, and then they transmit to their bot, because that's what it takes to actually build the bot. It's not just, you know, oh, hook up this wire. It's more than that. Um, so yeah, I've got a little bit of work ahead of me. Um, we'll see what I end up showing, but um, I've got the raw material for the new shafts. Um, if anyone's been following me on Instagram, you should be following me on Instagram. Link down below. Um, I got the new Arbor Press in. This was the reason for it. Um, I've got to do some broaching on the pulleys um, for the keyways and then do a little machining on the shafts. And I got this silly little thing. Um, I really like this so far. It's this little um, mini chop saw um, that Harbor Freight sells. It's like 40 bucks. And I end up getting this um, diamond coated blade on it and it can cut hardened steel. So having a really simple way to just chop off shafts and make your own custom shafts, check out one of these. Um, I'll have a link down below, but I'll probably do a full overview video on this because I'm gonna be, do, be doing some modifications to this. So. Anyway, check out my Instagram. I'll probably be posting pictures of the updates um, more than doing complete videos on everything. Um, but 
That is about a quarter of the work that I have. I also have the drive to talk about. Um, the electronics and then the frame and I'm not really sure how much I'll be doing with each one of those just kind of got to assess that so anyway hopefully you got something out of this video uh, check me out for the upcoming videos definitely check out my Instagram and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching